In this recording, we will look at how we can solve equations using logarithms and where it is useful to do so. And it is basically useful to use logarithms when we have equations of the form shown here, a to the power of x equals b. Or it can be a more complicated expression, but the main thing is that the unknown quantity, x in this example, is an exponent in the expression we are looking at. That is, it's a to the power of x equal to b. And we want to find x. But if we're going to solve this using logarithms, first we need to know what a logarithm is. And up here, you'll see the common notation for a logarithm. y equals log subscript a x. And what that describes is this is the logarithm of x to the base a. And what does that tell us? Well, y is the logarithm of x to the base a if and only if x equals a to the power of y. That is y, which is calculated by getting the log here, y is the power we require base a to be raised to in order to obtain x. So for an example of this, 2 would be equal to log base 3 of 9, for instance, because in order to get 9, we need to raise the base 3 to the power of 2. But how do we go on to solve equations using logarithms, now that we understand what a logarithm is? And scientific calculators can commonly compute logs base 10 and logs base e where E is Napier's constant. But how does this help us in solving equations? And I'll demonstrate an example using logs base 10. And because log base 10 is commonly used, it is often just written log without the 10 subscript, and that's a convention we'll use here. So we're wanting to solve, let's say, a to the power of x equals b. How do we do this? Well, the first step is we can take logs of both sides. So as I said here, we're assuming this is logs base 10. So log of a to the x equals log of b. Now one useful property of logarithms is that log of a to the power of some number n is the same as n multiplied by log a. And that is useful because you'll see it no longer gives n as an exponent. It now just writes n as a number multiplied by log a. So applying that to our previous step here, that would become x log a is equal to log b. And we're wanting to solve this for x. And since x is simply now multiplied by log a, to make x the subject, we can simply divide both sides by log a, which cancels it from the left-hand side, and gives us x equal to log b divided by log a. So let's have a look at a couple of examples of how this works in practice. Suppose we wanted to find x firstly, such that 4 to the power of x is equal to 158. So again, this is the type of problem we were looking at because x is the exponent here, the power. Logarithms will help us. So the first step was to take logs of both sides. Again, assuming this is logs base 10 here. So log of 4 to the x is log of 158. Then we can use our log law that says that log of 4 to the x is the same as x multiplied by log 4, and that is equal to log 158. Now dividing both sides by log 4 to cancel it from the left and make x the subject, we get x equal to log 158 divided by log 4. And log space 10 on the calculator will indeed be called the log button, and this would be equal to, to four decimal places, log of 158 is 2.1987, log of 4 is 
0.6021 and I'm writing it down to four decimal places for convenience here but it's good to keep it as accurate as possible until the final answer and if I have actually been keeping the answers as accurate as possible the solution will be 3.6519 to four decimal places so that means that 4 to the power of 3.6519 is approximately 158 and x will actually have an infinite number of decimal places if we could get a fully accurate value for x it would actually be that 4 to the x is exactly equal to 158 and if you think about it it makes sense that 4 to the 3.6519 would equal 158 because 4 to the power of 3 is 64, 4 to the 4 is 256 and this number lies between those. So let's look at a second example that requires just a little bit of manipulation first. In this second example we want to find t such that 8 times 1.08 to the t equals 10.5 times 1.2 to the t. So before we take logs of both sides it will be good to isolate the actual numbers that are to the power of t on one side of the equation and put the other constant numbers that those are multiplied by on the other side. So to do this we could start by dividing both sides by 8 to cancel that 8 from the left leaving 1.08 to the t equals 10.5 times 1.2 to the t divided by 8. We could then, so that all our terms involving t are on the one side, divide both sides by 1.2 to the t, which will cancel that from the right hand side and give us 1.08 to the t divided by 1.2 to the t on the left. So that's equal to 10.5 divided by 8. Now these are both positive numbers so it actually would be reasonable since both the 1.08 and 1.2 are positive to rewrite that simply as 1.08 divided by 1.2 to the t and on the right hand side 10.5 divided by 8 just becomes 1.3125 and now we can simplify inside the brackets on the left 1.08 divided by 1.2 is 0.9 so we have 0.9 to the t equals 1.3125 so now that we've done that it looks more like our first example an expression to the power of the unknown we're looking for on the left and just a constant number on the right so now it'll be the same process as before take logs of both sides and again we could do this log base 10 or log base e on the calculator so again I'll just use logs base 10 so log of 0.9 to the t equals log of 1.3125 again we can use our property that the left hand side is the same as t times log of 0.9 equal to log of 1.3125 so we want to make t the subject so dividing by log of 0.9 will cancel that from the left hand side to give us t equals log of 1.3125 divided by log of 0.9 and to four decimal places that works out to be t equals negative 2.5809 correction and to four decimal places that gives us t is equal to negative 2.5810 and of course once again we could check this is reasonable by substituting our answer into the original expression into each side of it and while once again because that answer is rounded off we might just get a very slightly different answer both sides should give a similar answer if we have indeed found t correctly